Oh. Oh, I just... I just started that on the opposite. I got an X in the sky. Well, it's kind of disappearing now. Look at that. X marks the spot. Oh, oh I guess you guys will have to look at me now. There's Maddie. Maddie, say hi. <laughs> it's a beautiful day here. And I'm going to the barn. Chapter 7, Part 5. How does God raise his children? Ow. I gotta show you guys. There. Good morning. You girls are gonna get up? Piggy piggies. Piggy piggy piggies. You gonna get up? Look at this, you guys. They're starting to drag all kinds of stuff in there, including in that other enclosure that I, where I feed them. They do that. They, they built their own nest for winter time. Very cute. There's another one of them woolly ones. Madison, is that your food? Come on now. All right, good morning, guys. How's everyone? Huh? Uh. Sit up. <laughs> what, what, what? What, what, what? We got company coming. <laughs> yes? Oh, you threw your bow out. Oh. That is a good boy. I'm going to set this up back here. This is kind of gone out here. Down here. I could put you guys a little farther back this time. There. You guys get messy. What? 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 All right. Then that's not for you. Okay, you guys ready? Oh, what happened here? No, Charlie. Let me tell you something. You're eating that. What's wrong with you? You. Not been doing a very good job. Yeah, we've got mice collecting corn in different corners, huh? Haven't seen any here yet, but over at the house, huh? What's the matter? You're not hungry enough for a mouse? Huh? Okay, so hiding his head. <laughs> set up very efficiently they get cleaned out every day which then it takes well anybody watch the other videos not very long and I'm not milking goats anymore which at that time I work too Let's get up about, yeah, sometime got up at four. So I'd be out here at a certain time to milk and take care of everyone, let them out, leave them in, the sad, whatever, and, and then go on up and close at school. Or to the bus. And then, and then, and then off to work. I don't know how I did it. Now I'm thinking back and 
was like, how did I do that by myself, Lord? Now, the children helped with certain things, but I'm going to have time to come out here. I should cook with. Oh, yes! <laughs> And I do that at 5 o'clock in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. And now, this is like, poof. easy peasy. Price, and I like it out here. I like, it gives me, a, it's just mucking out skulls. It's like clearing your mind every day. <coughs> So today, I saw a good one. Uh, I have some very interesting friends, and they're on Facebook as well. <laughs> I find all these interesting things. So there was one, uh, you know, pick your mug, and then let's see what it says. So I got mine. I picked the green one, by the way. <laughs> Because uh, that's my favorite color, per se. And uh, it said, I am who I am. And I don't need your approval, Daniela. I'm going, wait a minute, that's the wrong, that's the wrong name there. It should say God, right? I am who I am. And... Uh, it's uh, yeah, there's so many people out there that are deciding or can't decide. Does God really exist? No, God doesn't exist. And, it's like, and God's like, I don't need your approval for my existence because I am who I am. That's the bottom line. And you know, there is, I have to say, I don't mean to be per se unkind, but there is a certain amount of, of ignorance that comes with someone saying, oh, the afterlife doesn't exist. God does not exist. How did they come to that conclusion? I guess because they are looking for everyone's approval out there. And they are not really who they could be. I'm not saying what they want to be. Who they could be. And you know, what direction their lives could be taking. Uh, in the direct, for the directives yesterday, I said, okay, you, you're the one. You do that, right? Because you've got to become personally stronger first. In order to make any kind of difference out there, or, or you know, to really be, have a family that everyone kind of can be creative, uh, in a way. Uh, if you really think about it, and you're going, oh, yeah. And not stuck to other people. Well, it starts again with you. I am who I am, and I do not need your approval for it. Oh. Wait a minute, but yeah, there's all these buts and ifs coming now. People who are or doing this, da 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 da. da. Okay, gray matter, gray gray areas. Well, those that's not my area. My areas are black and white, and that is it. And obviously, the white areas you go towards the side of goodness, and the black areas. You stay away from, or, or, you know, if you can bring some light into it, and it is accepted, great. But I'm not going to approve anything over there. And they don't need my approval. Huh? On that black sign. And, uh, and they don't, and they can go ahead and do whatever they want. And uh, yeah, I guess, in a way, yeah, knowing who you are, for sure, knowing who you are, and not needing anyone's approval to do what you need to do, yeah, will bring light eventually to these really, really dark sides. Oh, wait a minute. I don't need 
need that for that. Yeah, but that's exactly it. Yeah, but I am who I am, and I do not need your approval. Signed, gone. And uh, then whatever happens in our life, huh? kind of is designed as, oh dear, all these bad things are happening. And I don't know where to go with it. Oh, all these great things are happening in my life. Well, I know where I'm going. It is black and white. If people like it or not, but that's what it is. Yeah? According to God. According to our heavenly parent. So how does he, how does he try to raise us? Well... Number one, you need to figure out who's raising you. Right? Who is making the decisions around you? Are you the one making the decisions for you and your surroundings if you are a responsible adult with, uh, you know, uh, uh, things you took on in your life, right? And children and a husband and or a wife, right? Or otherwise, your parents... Oh, no, 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 in your religion or belief, right? have you taken that on? And how secure are you in uh, what you have built up, per se? All right, take care of. Come on, piggy, piggy, piggy. Oh, I got some goodies for you today. So I'll give you an example here in a moment on how we know who we are. When I see, and again, this is kind of a little bit from yesterday to today as well. Well, it's uh, chapter 7. It kind of all should somewhat stick together. When we are out there getting information, oh, or just wherever we are at in our own environment, you've get, you get often two completely different views of anything, anything, right? And then there are the intrusions as well. I've had many people here and they want to help with the farm, this, and then they do, they decide, well, that's a better way. And it's about, can I do it like this? Or go, go, go ahead, you know, and sure enough, it doesn't take long and a problem happens. Okay. And again, I'm not going to say, no, I have to help. So I'm, huh? I'll tell them, this is how I would like it. Well, if they do it some in a different way, right, <coughs> what am I going to do? I'm going to have to let them see this isn't working. And why aren't you listening to someone who's got X years of experience uh, taking care of this barn and taking care of these animals? Okay. Oh, it's the same with the garden. Huh? I've got people kind of saying, well, you could do this, and you need to put that there, and then I not realize I'm going, yeah, I could do that. And Maverick yeah, would have a field day right, with that right there by the fence. Yeah. So I, the way I have my garden set up, right, I try to keep things out of his mouth. <laughs> not that easy to do, by the way. 
Right, guys? Not that easy to do. No. He's got his own ways of getting into stuff. And he really can crane, crane, crane his neck, can't you? Yeah. So there is that. So who's influencing? I call that influencing. Who you are. You are who you are, and you do not need my approval for it. If you're on the side of goodness, right, building up on whatever your life is, have it nicely organized as that. Organized. Organizing your life is, is not a bad thing. You see more clearly. Just like when I muck out the stalls. I see right, all the things that are going on in my head. Right, I see things more clearly. A path. That always shows itself. tend to do something very interesting to God. They decide when he's done good. And they decide when he's angry and vengeful and jealous and I don't know what else, right? They decide when he loved them and when he didn't love them, right? They decide Wow, that's really good that he's done here. Why is he letting this happening? Right? But God is who God is. I am who I am. And he doesn't need your approval for anything. Especially not something that we don't really understand who he actually, who and how he actually is. Yes, see? And the same thing, as I said before, people come in here deciding they know a better way, though they have nowhere near the experience that I have here. Nowhere near. But due to the fact that I like to help, to step, I just let them go ahead and, and do, and then I have to fix it again, right, later on. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So... I am who I am, and I do not need your approval. Well, God. So then, what's God doing? Isn't he doing exactly the same thing? He says, well, I've got all the experience. I've built up all this here on earth and in the universe and in spirit world. That's all me. I am who I am. And uh, so you, now you, you're going to want to change certain things. Tell me what to do. You have a better way. You do? Okay. I think we can all agree that no, we don't. <laughs> so what does that have to do with God raising us as children? Well, once you realize that, I saw the cup and I'm going, but that's not me. That's God. I am who I am, and I do not need your approval. That's not me. That's God. Then I realize, wait a minute. But God's the one who's raising me. So guess what? Yes, of course, if I follow him exclusively, learn from God exclusively, then guess what? I am who I am as well. Yes. And with that with that realization in many ways of realization with when you as I said you can't you can't you can't do it right for everyone
everyone. And sometimes people get so zealous around you that you're going to have to just let them, you know. You know, there's more outside. You are feeling better, aren't you? Yes, I can tell. Yeah, the last few days he wasn't doing that. Sometimes I have to hold the bales and drag the whole thing out. Come on. You need to do a little cleaning here. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you want to come out? Dog in the way? Oh, take your time. I'm not in a hurry today. <coughs> Treating the animals. I said, I need to, all I need to do is look, you guys. Choo, 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 choo. Go on. And he's like, ah. And there it goes. Huh? Oh, a little water. It's not going to hurt him. All right? And I get him to go where he needs to go without any kind of fuss. confusion out there and again it is because we are allowing these gray areas to become what am I thinking I'm gonna go clean out the barn with this uh, there are so many gray areas out there now rather than black and white that the people that are getting confused don't know who they are anymore and when that happens and you have enough people uh, they had got something they unite under. All these gray areas. And, uh, and due to the fact they don't know their self, they've not found any kind of floating around on I, I don't know what. That uh, in order for it to not become so apparent on how destructive all these gray areas are, they band together and invade God's space and the people's space that has good direction and want to come and change things, right? Oh, I can, right? we can do this different. This. And the thing is that in a way you have to let them. In a way, yeah, I'm gonna go, okay, right, I just told you how this is going to work, right? but you go ahead. And then sadly, you know, all you can hope for is that they don't get okay, in a barn like this. They don't do things. People don't do things. It's, it's, you can get hurt. Uh, or other animals, outside even. Huh? If you don't behave in a certain way. Huh? Oh, well, it's the outside. It's the outdoors. We're here on the farm and we get to... Yeah, you go just out there and do whatever. Okay, well, <laughs> if you don't wear proper shoes and you step into a thicket or whatever, you could get bit by a snake. Right? Or you step, you, know, you go out with shorts and, you know, a tank top and flip-flops. You go out and you come across the ground's nest of bees. Well, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> that happened here before. I had to run the crew, there's several people, and someone sure enough stepped into, right into a ground's nest. And here I am, I'm taking my shirt off so I can brush everyone off this nap, and I don't know what, right? And then I get them as fast as I can away, and because so many of them got stung, I didn't know who's allergic and who's not, I had to find the fastest way home with them. Well, guess what? I had... A few, I was dressed properly to go into the woods. And I had a few stings, but nothing like everyone else did. <coughs> right there. So I said, I wouldn't go out there like that. Yeah, but, okay. <laughs> All right. Now you're in my environment. Now I'm telling you, this is what could happen if you do certain things. Also with our animals, you know. I say, don't mess with that big billy goat, you know? Oh, I well, 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 want to see how strong I am. I said, I wouldn't do that if I were you, you know. Uh, Liam didn't. didn't. Well, it was kind of a funny one, but you know, the guy just went down and I 
I said, walk it off. <laughs> that was it though. Liam didn't go after him or anything. He just, yeah, I don't think you're going to hold on to them horns for very long. And how about this one? Okay. And uh, so there it is. You behave according to how the master of the place is telling you that you need to behave to be safe and have a good experience. Well, isn't God really telling us the same thing? The space that I've given you, behave and act accordingly and you will have a good experience on earth. I am who I am. I don't need your approval. He doesn't need to give us his approval either. He's just saying, okay, <laughs> this is kind of it. Oh, so, well, God just like happy honky dory, we're failing this. No, he's not. I don't know of, of any good parent out there whose child is sick and even might die from the sickness that is happy afterwards. Okay. Got it? All right. I mean, dear me. Examining every uh, ounce of... Uh, or picking out certain things in someone's life and then using that either for or against them isn't right either. Either you know their life or you don't and then one definitely shouldn't be out there doing what? <gasps> gossiping. God has definitely not raised us to be out there to gossip. So, yes, in any case, so, when people repeatedly come here to visit, they eventually, they find, oh, this is the way to go. I uh, one time had a couple here, and we needed to take care of some ducks. We had way too many, and even though people like duckies and this snap, ducks are... They're pretty nasty and mean to each other. And, uh, and that's just the way they are. So you don't want too many. We had way too many, so it was time to put some of them in the freezer. So I had two or three of them go around and, and, uh, and take care of them. And this girl, the one guy says, hey, can I try? And I'm going, hey, yeah, well, okay, here you go. Yeah. And he, uh, he struggled a little bit with it. And she was upset over how this one duck was suffering this now. That was like a 60 seconds or not even. I mean, come on now. And she was so upset this time. She was all taking care of the ducks right afterward. Everybody was working except for her. She ended up going on the porch. <laughs> all this now. And finally, I went out and I said, look, what is this kind of behavior of yours? Here, you have a guy who's willing to hunt, is willing to put his own raised food, per se, learning how to do that, learning to put that on your test. I said, do you know what you've actually got on your hand? A very valuable man when it comes to taking care of a family. And here you are, you're all tore up over a duck. <coughs> <coughs> so. That's one of those things where, where has the people's common sense gone when it comes to certain things and why uh, are, are there so many people out there that can't handle a darn thing anymore? Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Again. Where is their attention? Where is their attention? Yeah. So... Oh, anyway, uh, this is kind of, uh, I am who I am, and I do not need your approval, 
uh, goes into many different areas where would it hurt to uh, you know, anywhere you go say that first before I am who I am and I do not need your approval now again when I say that I say you're doing everything you're doing you want to do on the side of goodness on the side of goodness and experience okay if uh, someone's doing drugs out of their wazoo this snap which right now i hope every parent talks to their teenagers especially and say if you're going to a party you want to experience a, a, a experiment with drugs the snap beware because the drugs that are out there right now will kill you one time you take and it will kill you you will overdose on it okay yeah so now what's the fascination of all the drugs? Well, I am who I am, really. That's, that's who you are. That's who you are. You can't go to a party and just huh, have a beer or two or a drink or just that. And uh, that'll get you a little bit happy and hunky dory and funny and I don't know what. Most people don't, don't need that. I didn't need that when I was young. I didn't need that. Now, I have to admit, yeah, I did have, I smoked some marijuana as well, and uh, I just, I kind of didn't do what it, what it did for other people, and eventually I just had to say, well, yeah, no, this isn't for me, regardless. I wasn't a big drinker either, just didn't, I could have fun other ways. And then, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm the one who's in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> Well, anyway, everyone was happy for that. I am who I am, and I don't need your approval. Right? Yeah. When you had teenagers, like to experiment. But when I was a teenager, and I came across certain things, they just weren't as deadly as they are now. With just ingesting one time. And parents need to talk to their children about that. You know? Have a video. There's plenty of videos out there, uh, warning, uh, and not just, uh, 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 just saw one where uh, troopers in uh, Idaho, yeah, showing uh, this is the highway where that, all that stuff from the borders is coming through. There are videos out there. Show them. Show them that. Might save a lot. Might, just might save a lot. It might, and uh, ask your choke, is that really who you are? Yeah, I have to worry about you going out there, doing things like that? And, you know, possibly you come home in a coffin? Yeah. Oh. Again, who is the master in my life? A very sick dog, it's just five years old, and uh, I got a bag of dog food from someone who said, Bob, my dog is allergic to this food. It's, it's, I was told it's because of the breed. Now, she's gone already to the vet with the dog, her dog, and they said, oh, stop that food, that food. Dog's allergic to that food. Well, it was almost, yeah, it was a big bag of food still. That dog sh had sh showed the reaction right away. Oh, right there. Right away. And uh, I guess they were able to help him still. Oh, of course I took the bag of dog food. And my dog didn't show any symptoms. Very healthy dog until the bag is almost done. Then the same thing happens to him. Turns out, for one reason or another, that dog food was either tainted or poisoned or something was really wrong with this that bag of dog food. And uh, 
by the time our dog showed a reaction to it, it was, he, it was, uh, his organs were not, they just couldn't handle the, the amount of toxins in his system, and it showed on his skin. I, he couldn't be there, the big dog too. Couldn't take him for a walk anymore without his paws starting to bleed. That's how bad it was. Madison, why are you chasing the chickens around? That's how bad it was. Brought him to a vet. I said, look, I said, uh, just to show, you know, is there anything that can be done? Yeah, yeah, they couldn't figure it out. And I told him, I said, Eat that dog, that other dog, now this dog, and have food, you know. Oh, that, number one, they weren't listening to a thing I said, okay? Oh, that wasn't the food or this or that. No, 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 no. Okay, well, <laughs> all right then. Hmm, kind of a coincidence, but all right, you know. And, uh, and then, well, uh, I said, look, they couldn't figure out exactly what it was. We got this, that, and brought it back. <clears throat> Nothing would get better. <coughs> <coughs> and the reason was that dog's whole system was toxic. It was poisoned with whatever was in that dog food, and there wasn't any help for him anymore. Okay? There just wasn't. So I go back and said, Look, I said, I'm done watching this dog suffer. Just put him to sleep. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. We can send him to Pennsylvania. To a vet institute and they can you no, know, they can check him out i said really how much is that going to cost well to start with to just get him at two thousand dollars <laughs> okay all right so where did, did this vet come off to tell me no we're not putting this dog to sleep in the shape that he was in what the heck was this vet thinking? I am who I am. I know my animals. And I surely don't need anyone's approval. And I feel that animal needs to be put down. It, we're done with it. Okay. And that is that. And I've had my... Uh, I struggled with that many times. Because all my animals are very dear to my heart. Huh? Yeah. But in that case, anyway, so we found another vet. I just took him back and said, are you kidding me? $2,000 just to get him there? And then, and then what? Are you kidding me? Where am I supposed to get $2,000 from right now? Four children at home. Huh? And you want me to, huh? that are walking around in secondhand clothes. Yeah? I've got an old car that I drive. Yeah? Oh, we had a good life, don't get me wrong. Now you want me to spend $2,000 on a dog that I already know, can see? No, and then send him where? That's about the worst thing to do to an animal to just, that's like, that was a good dog. That dog loved us. We loved that dog. And sadly, How come that other vet, with my friend who brought the dog to the vet, didn't say, you need to get rid of that dog food. That dog food is most likely poisoned or something. No, 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 no. Oh, he just has an allergic reaction to something in there. And then the, the bag of dog food came to us. And of course, I took it happily. Yeah. Anywho, so there is, uh, again... I should have gone, maybe, uh, at that time, uh, busy with children. To snap. Should have thought, okay, okay, wait a second. Uh, wait a second. Uh, just, just think. Uh, and maybe I'd have said, nah, that dog food's got to go in the garbage can. The whole bag. Uh, or better, call the company and say, uh, we got a problem here. Right? Yeah? Okay. I was very young then, so I would do that now. So we found another vet, and... Uh, and uh, Paul and the kids all went. They wanted to go. I didn't go. I could. I, but that by that time, I was. I just. It was so hard for me. 
uh, with that dog, and uh, and they went and they said, yeah, yeah, you, it's it's fine, yeah, and you can all come in if you want to, and they did, and, and uh, it was a it was a good goodbye. It was a good goodbye for that dog. Shipping him off to Pennsylvania to some kind of a vet institute for two thousand dollars, and then what? Huh? Send him back dead? Then I'd still have to pay. Yeah, weird one. Yeah, that's a weird one. Oh, that's not the only one that I've got like that. I understand that some people have an ungodly amount of money to spend on animals, and that's fine, and they get to do whatever they want to. But what I found several times now with animals is that uh, the choices that I made, and then I just needed a little bit of help from a vet, and I was given the evil eye because I wasn't willing to uh, put out, you know, a hundred percent effort. Uh, to uh, for 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 success or not, yeah, in uh, in uh, helping an animal per se, yeah. and and um, I thought, hey, wait a minute, I am who I am, and I don't need anyone's approval on how I care for an animal because I already know that I care for every animal that I have on the side of absolute goodness. And things do happen, especially when you have a place like this where your animals actually get to live the life they get to live here. The life that they're meant to live. How they are designed to live. So, again, How is it that experts out there, like a vet, take it upon themselves to decide what the animal needs most and completely disregard who has spent time with that animal? Okay? Yeah. Now, I'm not talking of there's an accident, this, and you bring an animal in to get a leg fixed. Or this. Hey, that's different. In a way, just depends. I'm talking more about, again, why make it so difficult? There was another time where I needed some pain medication for uh, an old dog, again, and they wanted to have, have had, had the x-rays done. That was over $200 to just get the x-rays done so they can tell me he's got lung cancer and bone cancer. Do you know how painful bone cancer is? Okay. So right then and there, I should have just said, because he was still doing okay. He was just limping. I thought he had arthritis or something. And, uh, uh, but was quite old too. Big dog. And I'm um, going, oh, okay. Well, I looked at him and went, well, he's still doing all right. I mean, he's not wincing a snail yet. And he's just limping a little, you know. So I said, can you just give me something for the pain? They said, no, we can't. I said, why not? Well, you have to first do another $200 in blood work for us to do this. I said, what? We already know what he's got. He's an old dog. I just want, you know, not quite ready to let go of him. So how about we just, you know, no, no. I said, well, I don't have another $200. So I'll just take him back home. I was treated as if I wanted the pain medication, brought the dog in, paid two hundred dollars, okay, two hundred dollars for the exercise that so I could get pain medication. Do you know if I really wanted any pain medica pill pills? Huh? I know several places here I could go. Two hundred dollars. So you know, I'm looking at them going, "Are you serious?" Anyway, and uh, so I left with that. I was so mad. I was so upset over the way I was treated and on how they didn't care anything about my dog at all. All they wanted was just money, more money. 
didn't care about my dog at all. <clears throat> I took him back home. I didn't bring him anywhere else anymore. I just watched and that was a very sad ending there because I just felt I can still do something. I can, I wanted to, this dog to live longer and it didn't happen. He got worse and worse and he was such a trooper. Eventually, uh, I brought him uh, to the pound to be put down and I gave him just about an overdose of butte so he wouldn't feel any pain while we took him in the car. I had to lift him in the car. He couldn't walk anymore. And, stuff. and I told myself, I'll never do that again. I will never do that again. So my experiences uh, with veterinarians uh, uh, weren't all bad, but there, there were just instances, again, I had to say, I would, if I'd have, I would have walked in, go, I am who I am, and I do not need your approval for anything that needs to be done here when it comes to my animal. I'm the one in charge. I know you are the doctor here, but I'm the one in charge over my animal. It's the same with children. I, I did not. <laughs> I had a very good pediatrician, and uh, uh, I went in. That was, we started a very good relationship when I went in. One of the children had a cold. <coughs> I was worried <coughs> about an ear infection. I go and he says, no, no, it's everything's fine. It's just a cold. <coughs> but I'll prescribe you an antibiotic. I said, why would I? If it's just a cold, that's a virus, isn't it? Yeah. Well, why are you giving me an antibiotic then? He says, well, you don't want one? Said, no. <laughs> I just came in to make sure this wasn't worse than what I already thought it was. Oh, okay. I said, why would you prescribe me one? He says, well, that's what most parents want. It doesn't matter what I tell them. That's what they want. Really? So, okay, that's an odd one, right? But I told him, look, said, be honest with me. I would like to have a pediatrician when it comes to my children who is honest with me and gives me the least amount of medication for them if they need it or uh, if they don't need it and it's all good, this and that, then please. Yeah, I could tell you some stuff there, too, where uh, no, I was sent home, back home, and no, no, there's nothing there, there's nothing. I'm going, yeah, there is, I know there is. I had to wait for that pediatrician to come back from vacation, go back in, I said, look, I want you to check that something's wrong with one of my children. Sure enough. And he says, well, she probably had that since birth, so let's take care of it. But the other one sent me back home like I was a lunatic. Yeah. Okay. And I informed myself. I am who I am, and I do not need your approval. When you when you are a God-centered person, huh, then you have help from spirit world in all different kinds of ways. And with all the information out there, you know, about the vaccines and this and that, I decided I'm just gonna go and read up on it, right? With my first child. Well, I went. Did all the reading, this and that. And then I went to my pediatrician and said, can you do it this way? He says, absolutely. If that's what you want. I said, yeah. And, uh, and done it where, where, where there weren't given so many at the same time. And just what at the certain ages they could and has proven. And then the studies, this and that. My children were very healthy. They weren't already having some kind of... A, a uh, pre-existing condition as babies or this or that. So, and, uh, uh, well, hernia doesn't count for that, I don't believe. <coughs> so, uh, uh, so he did. Yeah. I went probably twice as many times with my children to get their vaccines done, but they all got done. And uh, I kept my children fed very healthy, so their immune systems were very healthy. So even if they would have come across something yeah, that's still floating around out there uh, through other children and they hadn't been vaccinated, by the time they were three years old, they were all vaccinated for everything. Then uh, they probably would have been able to, would have, oh, well, they didn't. They didn't get, they had the chicken pox. All of them had the chicken pox. And uh, my son actually showed an awful reaction to that. But he made a 
get it past him. So, again, if, if you are, as a parent, letting, uh, have no information, just, well, those are the experts, this, that, well, then beware. Beware. Beware of the gray areas. And beware on uh, how your child, uh, your own child, your own animal is the most important to you. To you. And you do not need approval from anyone for that. If you are a good parent, if you are a loving parent, a parent who actually desired their children, then you don't need approval from anyone to do the best, absolute best by your children without someone coming in from the outside and telling you you're wrong. Huh? But, or just rely, as I said, on someone that, well, they should know. They should. They should. But due to the fact that you are not informed as a parent, what happens? Yeah, okay. Well, we could go farther into that. I'm just bringing up these examples on how we are stuck in gray areas or how parents, people are willing to be stuck in these gray areas where there's so much confusion, this is not happening. Yet, if you commit to I am who I am and you don't need anyone's approval for that and be guided by the goodness of God, by the creation of God. By the principles of creation and the principles of love established 100%, non unchanging, unchangeable by God, by our parent from heaven. Now, if I, me as a parent, I think like this, uh, had my experiences and then had to make certain decisions, and I did it with, okay, not just out of the blue, the red, I studied up on it, da 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 da. Uh, and then came up with the best possible solution for my children, for my family, my circumstances. Well, if I do that, if I can do that, regardless on who is up, what, what do you think that God, our heavenly parent, would do any less for any of us? He came up with the absolute best plan, best surroundings, and gave us the most amazing abilities as our own species here on earth, humankind, human beings. And yet, we decide to do what? Go and find some way to approve of God? That's like going to the vet or a pediatrician looking at me and said, no, I, I, I approve. I approve of you as a parent. No, I don't approve of you as a parent. No, I don't approve of you as a animal owner because I'm not doing what they want me to do. Those are just two examples. Huh? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Yes, see? Yeah. yeah. on how we can and are manipulated by, again, not in the matter of life, but in the matter of money. Yes. It's uh, interesting, always interesting to me. What is that? Plastic? A piece of plastic in the hay? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Whoever throws this out in the garden or this or that, and then it ends up in my hay. Cool. Or whatever. 
you know that's another thing too uh it's uh, unbelievable on how one has to set rules in your own surroundings and then you're just being considered as what do they call it intolerant you're not tolerant yeah, I have to be tolerant of someone burning a couch out there and then my horse stepping on it and then I have to deal with the abscess because they didn't clean up properly? Seriously? I'm not tolerant enough. Or I expect for everyone to clean up their garbage here, this, that, because uh, you know, it could be a nail out there and I'm riding right over it and then or someone else and there we got a flat tire and you got back on us. That's intolerant? Oh, yeah, but that's different. Is it? Is it different? So I'm saying out there, I am who I am, and I do not need your approval. So I am someone out there who says, no, nope, sorry. Abortion is a black and white thing. There's no gray matter in there. There just isn't. If, uh, if there are complications with a mother and a child, then it is a medical procedure and has nothing to do with abortion. And often it's a very, very sad thing. You got that? Yeah, there's a difference. It's pretty black and white. Do I think that people should go into uh, each other's bathrooms? I grew up, I, I mean, there was, you know, there yeah, anybody could go in the bathroom, but it was just one stall, right? So I, when I was in there, there wasn't suddenly a man coming in and going, oh, hi, don't mind me. Or, oh, yeah, got you now. Right? Whoever it was waiting outside, I have to wait until I come back out. Now, okay, do I have proof of that? Absolutely not that you have a... A restroom where there's more than one stall in it, right? more than one toilet that you can't lock the door, and you suddenly have a guy coming in, wanting to. Huh? Okay, well, hey, uh, by the way, I as a woman have gone into the men's restroom with more than one stall because I just had to go and couldn't wait for twenty women still in line going. Well, there's nobody there, so I kind of look in. Is anybody in here? No, no. So I run in, you know, and well, you can pee real fast. And then and sometimes, you know, here comes some guy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I really have to go. And then the guys go, hey, it's fine. Don't worry about it, you know. That's a different thing now, isn't it? Yeah. And here's another one. So the guys uh, already have a much easier time to go to the bathroom because there isn't as much traffic going on there. Now, on top of the 20 women or 30 or, okay, 10 standing in line, I have to look at men standing in line as well? In my line? Oh. Well, that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of black and white, isn't it? And you know what? Here's the thing. I would say, okay, if there is a guy and really look just looks like a woman, kind of afraid to go into the men's room, which also, what do the men care if there's a guy who wants to dress up as a woman? Gosh, I don't care, you know. I really don't. As long as, if my children kind of realize, hey, mom, isn't that a guy? Why is he dressed up as a girl? You know, don't turn around and go, you got a problem with that? Right? My children are just asking, so I can say, well, some men, I guess, like to dress up as girls. Right? And some women like to dress up as guys. So it kind of depends on the reaction as well when it comes to that. Oh, so they want to say, as I said, they should go in the right restroom. And the men, who, if, if there is, has, hey, sorry guys, I'm having a girly day today, right? But goes into men's restroom because that's the equipment he's got. Then God Almighty, what is the big deal? I'm not getting it. You know, at one point, <laughs> a lot of guys all around the world, they were wearing robes. And this, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's, the, the wearing pants has isn't been hasn't been that such a uh, uh, early on kind of thing uh, when it comes down to it. Yeah. Then then the women yeah, have started wearing pants. Yeah, well, that kind of caused some. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Okay, I think that 
with certain things, if it if it just stays within a realm of a, a certain uh, let's see, as I said, yeah, if my children ask, and then you know whoever it is turns around and 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 actually you know makes it into a big deal that hasn't even happened yet because yeah? it didn't even give me a chance uh, then uh well anyway okay and can you uh, if your children giggle over certain things is it really automatically a bad thing and if you are out there dressed and doing or acting a certain way and it kind of strikes someone as funny well isn't that kind of a consequence as well isn't it okay I am who I am, and I do not need your approval to be tolerant because that's what you want. So you get that? Yeah. So in any case, that's, that's how I view all this stuff out there. So the bottom line of all that is there is a certain acceptance Yep. What am I going to do yep. uh, uh, on how people want to walk around out there? That's not my area. That's not my problem. I have nothing to do with that. What do I care? But if you start endangering children out there where predators, uh, pedophiles, are having an easier time getting to them because now you're, you're making it even more difficult for me as a parent or a grandparent to make sure my child is safe when we go to the store or to a bathroom uh, or certain other things, then I'm having a problem. I'm going to start having a problem. If, if my young, you know, older children are seeing what people are doing out there with their different differences and teaching or trying to teach my child, you need to fight for us to snap and that they are destroying people's property, they're destroying people's livelihood, they're killing children and look at it as collateral damage for their cause, I'm going to have a problem with that. Yeah. I am who I am. I know what I stand for. I know who raised me. It is the I am who I am. And God definitely does not need your approval. Neither do I. When it comes to certain fundamental rights to live one's life. Oh, but that's why. No, 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 no. I am not out there destroying anybody's life. No one's. There is a difference. And there is one thing for sure I will never approve the taking of any life out there. I'm going to lock them up, though, <laughs> for the rest of their lives. Have them raise their own food, this and that. I don't know. What's it going to take for people like that? But as I said, yeah. God's trying to raise us by letting us know raised in his image, we are created in his image, that we have fundamentally a strong sense of survival, for survival, not just ourselves, but everyone else around us. And yet, we've also been given the common sense We've been given the uh, process of thought where we can have to actually, because animals don't do that. Animals do not, uh, animals do not have to process certain things like 
there. They grieve, they can grieve as well, but they do not process it in the same way as we do, nor do they process anything else in the same way as we do. Yeah? Because the thought process from A to Z does not exist for them. Instinct is what exists for them. So, a <coughs> uh, uh, chicken doesn't lay an egg because they want to. <coughs> they have to. <coughs> when a chicken lays an egg and it can't expel it for one reason or another, they will die. There is that. Ah, I thought this uh, last chapter would be much easier, but it, I guess <coughs> it comes down to it again. <coughs> where one I am who I am and I have retained a certain conscience that allows me to now in my age say I am who I am and I do not need your approval I don't and neither does God doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. You don't get to. It <laughs> doesn't matter. He does not need your approval for anything. And the fundamental things that are in existence and will never change are the principles of creation and the principles of love. It doesn't matter how people look at it out there. In science, yeah, to change certain things around, go, well, that doesn't really exist, this snap. Yes, it clearly does. Yeah. Then, uh, well, you get to do that, but you're not getting my approval for it. Yeah. Nor do you need my approval for it. God raised me to hopefully raise some good human beings, including myself, in this world for a continuation of respect for life. And people can have buts and ifs out there in all them gray areas, and I don't care. I don't care. It's not my problem. I the best I ever heard is that when you buy a house, make sure you own the house and the house doesn't own you. Mm hmm Exactly. Yeah. So there you go. Make sure you own your life and not someone else. That you're not spiritually influenced to the point of you don't even know who you are anymore. Yeah. yeah, then someone else from you comes and says, I am who I am and I don't need your approval. And I'm going to go, okay, well, that's too bad that the person you took over are possessing, influencing, and the principle of love isn't coming to me and say, I want to get out of this. And I extend a helping hand every which way to make that happen. And it can happen. It's not that hard to do, actually. All right. That's my last of it here on Chapter 7. I am who I am. And I do not need your approval. Then it says, Daniela, at the bottom of the cup. And I'm going, yeah.
Yeah, but that's the number one first. That's God. I'm going, oh, yeah, absolutely. God does not need your approval. For his existence. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a, it's a funny one in a way. On the other hand, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I gotta keep that one in mind, right? Yes. So, could be one of my directives. I've, I've been thinking about it. I am who I am. And I do not need your approval. Now again, that is only accepted on the side of goodness. One has to have their priorities right and straight when it comes to that. And people out there now can say, oh, she's against this and against that. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you make up the stories however you want to. Or start this video from the beginning again and listen to it one more time. God's love and blessings always. Now we'll talk to y'all another time. I got to get to it here. <laughs>